The Suicide Squad's kaiju villain Starro explained. While the term kaiju nowadays probably conjures images of Godzilla and Kong laying the smack down on each other in neon-soaked city streets, Warner Brothers and DC Comics are hoping to change that with a massive monster of their own. In the first official trailer for James Gunn's The Suicide Squad, there are all manner of unexpected sights and sounds, including King Shark ripping dudes in half, Peacemaker explaining his strategy for keeping the beaches clean, and of course, Harley Quinn making her thoughts on coughing etiquette deadly clear. If you cough without covering your mouth- Harley, although that isn't an open invitation for you to cough without covering your mouth. But perhaps the biggest, and I do mean biggest surprise of the trailer, comes towards the tail end where we see Steve Agee warning of a freaking kaiju. And on the monitor over his shoulder, you can see what appears to be a giant starfish to which Bloodsport has the most relatable reaction of all time. Huh? As longtime DC Comics fans well know, this is Starro the Conqueror, who's basically an intergalactic starfish kaiju. But for the uninitiated, why should you care? And what does this mean for the Suicide Squad? Well, allow us to explain. Created by Gardner Fox and Mike Sikowski, Starro debuted in 1960's The Brave and the Bold No. 28, inspired by Ray Cummings' 1930 pulp sci-fi novel, Tyranno the Conqueror. Starro's the leader of the Star Conquerors that hail from the aptly named Star Planet, and Starro and its species are mind-controlling intergalactic starfish who psychically enslave entire planets to transform them into massive nests so they can nurture their next queen, the Mother Star, and start this whole grim process all over again. In its very first appearance, Starro was discovered by Aquaman, who naturally learned all about this extra-large echinoderm from his good friend Peter the Pufferfish. You know, that old classic Silver Age comics naming convention. It turns out Starro was apparently turning normal Earth starfish into gigantic monsters and setting them loose on an unsuspecting public. It took the entire might of the Justice League to defeat them as these mind-controlling marine life proceeded to hypnotize and conquer entire towns in the process. Ultimately, though, Starro was defeated by lime, as in the ground limestone rock you put on your lawn, not the citrus to prevent scurvy and enhance margaritas. So hopefully, Harley Quinn and company can find a Home Depot somewhere on Cordo Maltese. Otherwise, <laughs> goodbye. Over the years, Starro has appeared time and time again as one of the Justice League's most enduring and terrifying nemeses. He seized control of members of the Justice League like Martian Manhunter, and at one point the entire human race while they slept, prompting Dream of the Endless, who we'll soon see in Netflix's The Sandman series, to intervene and help the Justice League. Otherwise, they're catching L's as well as Z's. In terms of ability, Starro's main power is mind control, which it uses to overwhelm its opponents by creating parasitic clones of itself to latch onto its enemies' faces and turn them into its meat puppets. Starro's also capable of flight, energy absorption, and regenerating wounds at an astonishing rate. As we've seen when fully grown, Starro is basically invulnerable to conventional forms of attack and is even capable of terraforming an entire planet like we saw in JLA 22 and 23. So what can we expect from Starro in James Gunn's The Suicide Squad movie? Well, apart from wreaking havoc on Cordo Maltese and General Suarez's troops, we think this colossal starfish kaiju could actually be the mystery character played by Taika Waititi. Ever since the Oscar-winning filmmaker was revealed to be a part of this cast during DC Fandom, fans have been feverishly speculating about who he could possibly be playing. Now, the most popular guest for a very long time was King Shark, but James Gunn confirmed that this fearsome fish man is actually played by Sylvester Stallone. So who better to embody the contrast between something so inherently ridiculous yet deadly serious like Starro than the man who played Adolf Hitler as an imaginary friend in Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi? Far more importantly though, James Gunn has an opportunity to give the DC Universe its own version of Baby Groot by bringing in one of the best parts of Scott Snyder and Francis Manipal's Drowned Earth Justice League storyline, Jaro. As the name suggests, Jaro is a fragment of Starro that grew in a jar raised by Batman to assist the Justice League. Jaro considers Batman to be his dad and has dreams of becoming the best Robin ever, which is even more adorable if you imagine a tiny Taika Waititi voiced starfish being raised by Robert Pattinson's Batman. I mean, truly. DC, the ball is in your court, and I hope my check is in the mail because that is a winner through and through. As for how the Suicide Squad can defeat this colossal kaiju, well, my money's on the thinker as played by Peter Capaldi, because to take down a psychic villain, you're probably going to need a powerful psychic of your own. Now, if they can just get him to cooperate, who am I kidding? He's probably going to die. Most of these characters are definitely going to die. 
And that is everything you need to know about Starro before you watch The Suicide Squad. And honestly, it's just awesome to see James Gunn take even more comic book characters that may seem too strange for mainstream audiences at first blush and putting them into massive blockbusters like this. And based on what we've seen so far of The Suicide Squad, it appears that James Gunn's about to do for DC what he's already done for Marvel in the best way possible. In the meantime, though, we'll keep you up to date on all things The Suicide Squad over at Nerdist.com. But first, tell us, what did you think of the trailer? Are you excited for Starro on the big screen? And is this who Taika's actually playing? I hope so. Let us know in the comments below. And for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, stay tuned to Nerdist.com.